the National Education Union in the United Kingdom conducted a poll of its teachers, and 44% plan on quitting in the next five years. Now, the heavy workload and extensive paperwork played a significant factor in their decision to leave. Century Tech is an artificial intelligence and neuroscience platform which powers teaching and learning by tackling these problems head on. So Priya, at Century Tech, you're using artificial intelligence to help improve the education experience. How exactly are you doing this? So at Century, we've blended artificial intelligence and technology with neuroscientific theories, so theories on how we learn. And then the machine's tracking every mouse movement, every interaction of a student that's logged into the machine, whether they're studying literacy, numeracy, and a law degree or finance. And it tracks what they're doing and it personalizes recommendations to them. So just imagine a student that's struggling with physics, right? And we all remember those days. And this machine will learn, well, you're struggling with physics actually because you're struggling with a concept in mathematics. And then it'll provide the mathematics to solve the issue in physics and do that on its own. So it's trying to remove the one size fits all of education, one size delivery, but also then providing real time, real, real -time insights to educators. So you know, teachers who are the most powerful people in the classroom, giving them the information they need to make timely targeted interventions. So it sounds like the technology is helping cut down the preparation time teachers take when it comes to preparing for lessons. So how does it work when you look at, say, a classroom of 20, 30 students? You've got to bring them along while also giving them that individual attention. The information it's giving to the teachers, the recommendations that it's giving to students is incredibly accurate. And you mentioned saving time, right? So if we think about when we were at school and school today, teachers have to create the test, they have to give out the test to 13 children, they have to then mark the test. That's a lot of time. And then a teacher has to figure out why children are struggling, right? Because it's not just about marking a test, you've got to figure out why have they got the answer wrong. Now that takes an enormous period of time. So the technology can remove a lot of that administrative work. So help me understand the data set itself. So you have uh, a data set globally of students, but then there's a component that it learns as it goes as well, dependent on the specific curriculum and the specific grades and the specific schools. Yeah, so what we had to do about a decade ago was actually create that data set because it didn't exist. So we had to put the technology in the schools. We had students learning maths, literacy and the sciences that it was tracking their movement across that particular content set. And then we trained the data, we trained the algorithms, and then had to essentially create the artificial intelligence technology. Because as we know, you never get AI from the get-go. You have to basically be able to build that machine. But ever since the AI went live, if you like, in 2018, that machine has just kept on going and kept on learning. And then we have a team of in-house uh, developers, engineers, data scientists, teachers and neuroscientists and then they continue to, to tweak that if you like and, and develop that technology so it's just better and smarter every single time that students are on it. So do we have the right infrastructure to be able to implement artificial intelligence into education systems globally at scale? So there are many organizations that can implement AI across the globe, but to your question, there is still a huge digital divide. So whenever we're building technology and we're thinking about innovation for good, we need to think in education of the software, which is these AI technology platforms. We need to think of the hardware, Michael, the devices, and then we need to think of connectivity. And we all know that there are parts of the world where there are parts of the UK, you know, which is not quite near where I am, there's a lot more we need to do to allow it to truly scale, but the technology platform itself is scalable. Where we hit a roadblock is absolutely where people don't have devices and they don't have connectivity. What does the future classroom look like now that, you know, you mentioned 10 years ago, we didn't have artificial intelligence and, and now we do in the classroom. Now we're looking at neuroscience to be incorporated into some of the ways that we help educate our kids what does the future look like when it comes to teaching? It's really interesting with neuroscience because there's lots of theories out there that have been tried and tested, both live in classrooms, live in higher education, but also in university labs. And so it's just a continuing developing field. We're learning a lot about memory function when things go from someone's 
short term to long term memory. We're learning about things like motivation in education, which is incredibly important or the difference between a student having intrinsic or extrinsic value in terms of what they're learning. So it's really exciting to involve neuroscientific theories because we're learning with real data sets now. So actually the ed tech is allowing the neuroscience to continue to develop, which is super exciting because that's using you know, academia and innovations in technology for good.